Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Friday, the 17th day of June 2022. I hope you're all safe today. I hope you're healthy. I hope your family, as far as the needs of your family and you are, being met in terms of food and shelter, clothing, as well as health. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field and the first responders who are out here every day, especially on weekends, trying to save lives. And those that pick up garbage for us to keep streets and sidewalks and highways and parks clean. And those that make deliveries for our convenience heavily on the weekends. Double blessings on the men and women trying to rescue, help, and deliver the victims of child molestation and pedophilia. The victims of pornography and child pornography. The victims of child molestation. The victims of prostitution and child prostitution. The victims also of human trafficking and sex slavery and double curses on those perpetrators, profiteers, and perverts who traffic in the human misery on innocence. Finally, blessings upon the homeless, nearly 600,000 men, women, and children in the United States on the streets, no roof over their head, and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions and blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. So, as we're getting closer, we're now on the 17th. We're six days away from the NBA draft. Draft night is going to be lit, brethren. And it's going to be very important for the New York Knicks. As we've been saying for months now, this draft is going to be very important for multiple reasons. And we talked about them. Number one, the direction of the franchise. The direction of the franchise is going to be determined by what they do on draft night. Um, right now, we have a mix of veterans and young players. Okay, and what direction they go, whether toward more veterans or toward more young players, will be determined on draft night. What happens with players like Julius Randle, Evan Fournier, Alec Burks, Derek Rose? What happens with Nerlens Noel? And what happens with players like Obi Toppin, Mitchell Robinson, R.J. Barrett? Manuel Quickly, Deuce McBride, Jericho Sims, Quentin Grimes, Cam Reddish. What happens to these guys? Because what happens to them is going to tell us the direction of the Knicks. Now, I've been saying to you all, all along, I believe Don Leon Rose is trying to go young and trying to develop the team the right way and trying to put us in a flexible position so that you develop the young players that you have and see who works out and who doesn't. So not everybody's going to make it. And the players that you have determined are your future. After you have vetted them with heavy playing time, you keep and you move forward and hope to attract a superstar. That would be two seasons from now. Um, right now, you just want to play them and play them hard and play them heavy minutes so you see what you have as far as development and talent. Okay. And so this particular draft, I've been saying, is probably the last one where we'll be this focused on this situation. I'm not saying that any draft is not important, but this is the one that will really put our team together in terms of the youth. Next year, this coming season, um, hopefully, uh, we will see the playing time of the youth uh, heavy, especially those that are not rookies. Uh Want to see, of course, we want to resign Mitchell Robinson, but that's another story. Uh, there's RJ. We want to see OB starter minutes. Um, Quentin Grimes should get starter minutes. Uh, at the point guard spot, I've been hearing all kind of rumors. Um, the media makes it always sound like the Knicks are desperate. The Knicks are not desperate. The Knicks are building. When you're rebuilding, you're not in a hurry. You're trying to do it the right way. Okay, and that's what happens. Uh, you get fans, and I could tell by some of the way the comments, not just the comments themselves, but how they are formulated. For example, the Knicks must do this. The Knicks have to do that, or they're going to be terrible. They have to do that. That's 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 a mentality that says uh, we're in a hurry. We have to do this now, or we'll be forever sunk. When you're developing the right way, you look longer term, brethren. Longer term means. The next couple of seasons, especially with your guys like your Obi coming into his third season, Deuce in his second, Grimes in his second, Jericho in his second. You know, you're looking at, you know, you got to see what 
couple of years. And then all of these cats, 24 or under. So you got to get them a couple of seasons to see where they're at. Especially one this coming season is going to be very important. So you want to really look longer term. The, the, the media, and including, again, I like my man Mark Berman, but he, he looks too short term. Superstar now, blockbuster now. You got to look longer term. Okay? So that's why this draft becomes important. Now, let's talk about the trade up with King and, uh, with uh, Jade and Ivy because um, some of you have brought up a point and I want to address it. Well, I don't think somebody says, I don't think the Kings want Keegan Murray. Um, but you have to, again, understand, brethren. Listen, this game is about flexibility. You're not locked into anything. There's no, I have to with one player. Unless it's a LeBron, a Luka Doncic, a Magic Johnson, a Larry Bird. A, you know, if, if it's one of those guys, then yeah, you try to get them at all costs because what you're going to do is you're going to destroy your team and start with that one guy who's going to be the superstar that you're going to develop around. But that's a rarity. And there's none of those guys in this draft. Okay. Um, but. You have flexibility. So let's go over this. The Kings want Keegan Murray. Okay. But if the fourth pick is going to net them, let's just use it as an example. Let's say they make a deal with Detroit. Because it's been rumored that pretty much all the teams between four and 11, all of them are interested in Ivy. Okay. And apparently it, the Knicks, the Detroit Pistons, the uh, the uh, who else? The, the Indiana Pacers. These teams are really interested. Like they, they're coming hard at at in, at uh, Sacramento. So let's assume. Uh, let's let's take Indiana. They pick sixth. So let's say if you're Sacramento, you get Indiana's sixth pick. You get uh, there. You get next year's or the year after this first rounder. You get. Um, Chris Duarte, or each, I'm just using this example. You get a bunch of assets. You get Miles Turner, or, you know, Chris Duarte. You get a, some assets plus some second rounders. See, so now you forsake the desire for Murray and take all of that and see who's available at six. You understand? So it's a flexible game. It's not like I must do this and there's no other plan. So they do want Murray. Okay. He fits with them. But that's why they're fielding calls because they could either just take Murray at four. But why would they do that if they could get additional assets? And in the case of Indiana, let's say Detroit decides we want, we want Shaden Sharp. They can take all up, get them assets and still get Keegan Murray. See? So, um, you know, that's how you got to think about this. And, 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 Again, people will ask me, well, you know, do we have to give up Obi? We don't have to give up nothing. See, y'all got to understand when you're making a deal, any deal in life, okay, you don't give away the store to make the deal, right? You don't let somebody know how badly you want something when you're trying to make a deal. So how would, you know, especially we've seen this with Leon Rose, y'all got to understand, but step back a second, get away from the media catnip and, and look close at what this cat could do. So, when you approach a deal like this, you have in your mind the maximum that you're willing to pay. So let's 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 look at this now. So let's say, and I'm going to use this example again because this is what I, this is the max I would pay. So I'm in my mind, I'm saying, okay, I'll give them Cam, I'll give them my number eleven, I'll give them my Dallas 2023, I'll give them two second rounders, I'll give them a combination of two out of the three of Julius, Evan Fournier, and Burks, and that's the maximum that I'm going to pay. But I don't come at them like that. I come at them with less than that. And, if, and, what, and what you do is when you come at them like that, listen, you say, okay, this is the maximum I'm willing to pay. If they do not meet my price, I'm going to plan B. What is plan B? Plan B is to see, okay, who's dropping to me at 11? Is that person, is that kid that's dropping to me at 11 worth me taking? Or plan C, or do I trade down? And see how many additional picks I can maybe get by trading down. And some of you don't understand how that works because your mind is too narrow. You think, well, why would they give up two picks in Charlotte for just the 11th pick? Let me tell you why. Supposing San Antonio takes Jalen Duran and they want a center 
and they do need one. And then they say, well, we need somebody to run with Mel- LaMelo, and we really are high on Mark Williams. At 11, the Knicks could take him and offer him to the highest bidder. That's below them. That's number one. Number two, let's assume also the Knicks say, I'm going to give you 11. I'm going to give you two second rounders from next year. Okay? And I might throw in a player. I want your 15 and your 13. You understand? There's so many ways this could get done. Okay, you gotta understand that, and, and I'm surprised. See, some people are so busy hating on Leon that you ain't see he's done this before. He's done this before. He did the last two drafts. He did stuff like that. So that's what the options are. So we're looking at Murray, but do not ever think it's like make or break. Either we get Murray or we're done. That's not no. I mean, not Murray. Um, Ivy or we're done. That's not the situation. There's multiple ways to skin a cat. Okay, we got a really good young core already. Don't forget what the media talking about. We got a good young core. Okay, we got to decide what direction we going. Now, like I said, they're negotiating hard, and and other teams are negotiating also, and other teams got to make the same decisions the Knicks got to make, such as Detroit. What are they gonna give up to get the Kings pick? They just dealt with the Kings in getting um. Uh, uh, what's that boy name for, from, uh, Duke? The number one over, their number one pick from a couple of years ago. They just negotiated, got him. They sent Trey Lyles over there to the, to, to, uh, the Kings, you know, so they just made deals with them. What else can they give them? I don't know. Jeremy Grant? I don't think so. Jeremy Grant, uh, that, I mean, they could, they could trade Jeremy Grant there, but Jeremy Grant may not stay there. Because Jeremy Grant's in the expiring deal. You have to understand, why would the Kings take Jeremy Grant and he may not sign there long term? He might decide, I'm going to go somewhere else. So that's Detroit. Everybody got issues. Then you got Indiana. They got issues. You know, so this is going to be very interesting. But I will say this. If, in the example, the Kings decide, you know, none of these deals make sense for us then we'll just take Keegan Murray and go on with life. You know, let whoever's next, Detroit, deal with with Ivy or just have him. So this is going to be interesting. But apparently, uh, it's, uh, from what I repair, you know, Ian Begley reported that there's at least three other teams that's in that range between uh, five and 11 that are looking hard at uh, at, at Jaden Ivy. It's Detroit, Indiana, and, uh, and, and the Pelicans. They're looking hard at Jaden Ivy. All of them. And so, um, also, uh, another big news. Um, first of all, let me also say uh, congratulations to the Golden State Warriors, who are now the world champions again uh, in the NBA. They beat the Celtics. I know I picked the Celtics in six because I, I did not want to see the Golden State Warriors keep winning. But they did. Congratulations to them. So, we move on with life. That's them. All right. So, uh, Benedict Matherin has not worked out with the Knicks. That is significant. He has not worked out with the Knicks. So, um, now that's not to say he won't work out with the Knicks, but according to what we, what I read yesterday, what he said, he has worked out for Detroit, Indiana, and the Pelicans. Now look at that. That's the fifth. I'm sorry. Detroit, Indiana, and Portland. That's right. Those are the teams, not the Pelicans, Portland. The fifth, the sixth, and the seventh picks in this year's draft. Now look at that. He's going to be picked by one of those guys. And he, and he says he has no other workouts scheduled. So that's mean he, he knows that one of those teams are going to pick him if he's there. All right. And, and he's going to be there. He's going to be there at fifth. He's going to be there at sixth. He's going to be there at seventh. And again, the Kings could trade Ivy's pick and still get Matherin. So let's go over this. This is going to be a very difficult deal for the Knicks. They're going to be very difficult. Deal. You see, a lot of y'all, you're cr- whining about um, Obi. You don't give away what you're starting to build to build. <laughs> you don't do that. Obi is one of the building blocks going forward. You don't give away a proven. And what do I mean proven? Obi has played two seasons in the NBA. Ivy has not played one yet. Ivy is all promise right now. He's all promise. So you got to be careful when you talk about giving away if you were talking about trading Obi Toppin as part of a package for Luka Doncic 
or for Shea Gilders Alexander, you know, or Paul George. Now that's different. You're talking about proven commodity and you're giving, then that way Obi is, is, you know, the future, the hope, the development. But in this case, Obi is the proven commodity. He's played two years in the league. We know what we're getting from him and he's still 24. We don't know, we don't know what we're getting yet from, from Jaden Ivey. See, so even though he's full of promise, right? He could be a superstar, but we don't know until he plays. So, yeah, I, Cam, he wasn't drafted by the Knicks. Leon wanted him. Tibbs did not want him. Some of y'all don't understand that. Tibbs did not want him. Leon did, and he made that deal without Tibbs. Okay? And so now the boy hurt again. Contract year. Somebody might want to take a flyer on him. He's definitely talented. So he's going to be available in a trade. I'm just trying to be real with y'all. But um, this is going to get very, very interesting. I do want to see who comes in um, as far as the next couple of days. So we got six days. Let's see who comes in uh, as far as draft. But Matherin has said he has no other workout schedule. And so that that's off the tape. Okay. Um I have heard that they had scheduled Jeremy Sohan and Berman said before he went on vacation that he heard Sohan was coming in. Uh, I, I'm going to wait, you know, a couple of days, like I said, over the weekend to see if that happens. But so far, Agbaji, um, Dyson Daniels, who also, um, I think is done, um, as far as workouts at this point, Dyson Daniels will probably go between, I think he's going to go between and I hope he does, between the Pelicans and the Washington, uh, which I hope he goes between one of those. But there's Daniels that the Knicks worked out. There's Agbaji, Tari Eason, um, uh, Malachi Branham. We, those are the, the bigger names in terms of guys in that 11 area that they have worked out. You know, Marjan, um, as also they worked up Marjan also, Bochamp, Bochamp. So they worked him out a couple of times. So we'll see. But to me, those guys are all trade down assets. Uh, Agbaji and Tari are probably, you know, worthy of an 11th pick. The rest of them, like to me, I don't want Dyson Daniels. Um, they haven't worked out. Thank goodness. Mark Williams or Jalen Duran. Um, so, um, they're not picking a five. I don't, and I'm glad about that. But, um, Tari. Is of the guys they worked out, Tari and o o Agbaji are the two guys that I really would like to see them get. And I really feel that they can pick one of them at 11 and maybe get the other one, you know, with a trade down scenario. And so well, I, I'd like to get, if we could get those two kids, whew, I think we'd be in pretty good shape, brethren. I think we'd be in pretty good shape. I really do. So, um, yeah, let's see what happens. This weekend is going to be interesting because it's going to come out if, you know, who else went to Tarrytown to work out. So far, Agbaji is the name that, that was real prominent yesterday. But then again, we knew that from earlier last week he came. I don't know if this might be the second time he's worked out for the Knicks, which means, of course, they're very interested. Um, and I like him. I like him as a wing. I liked him. I have him above Johnny Davis, actually, um, you know, because of the fit with the Knicks and, 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 and the system and everything. But I'm not crying on Johnny Davis. If they get Johnny Davis and he becomes a star, great. I wouldn't mind about Johnny Davis. But we're going to see what happens. I, I haven't heard them bring Johnny Davis in for a workout. If you have, if you have any intel, legitimate intel that says that, let me know. Uh, I'd like to know that, but I don't know that so far. And I have not heard officially that they have worked out Jeremy Sohan yet, but we're going to find out. All right. So anyway, it's Friday. Enjoy your Friday. Um, be safe out there. Shalom. Sure.